Hey everybody, this is AF, the creator of Dead Pixels, and today we're gonna go through the second uh, demo of The Forge. Uh, as you can see, I have a, a very special guest with me today, and he's gonna help me go through all of the features uh, that have been implemented so far. Um, there's a lot of technical things as well, so um, make sure you pay attention. Uh, the demo is gonna be a bit longer than the last one, so... Um, we're going to cover a lot of interesting things. Uh, if you guys have questions, you can either pop them in the comments down below or just join the Dead, Pixel, uh, Dead Pixels Discord server. Uh, I'm going to leave a link uh, in the description as well. Uh, all of the other relevant links will be left in the description too. Uh, so yeah, without uh, any further ado, let's jump right in. All right, buddy, let's go. All right, so before we get started, uh, just like to go through, uh, quickly go through the Dead Pixels uh, history. Uh, Dead Pixels is the first interactive NFT collection on the Cardano blockchain. Uh, 10,000 unique pieces, all sold out, uh, minted about nine months ago, I think. Um, and they're uh, essentially web pages. You can double click them and they're gonna show their stats. You can also uh, add them on your home screen, on your phones. Uh, they're infinitely scalable. They're made out of code. There's no images here. Quite uh, interesting and unique uh, at the time when they were developed. Uh, also today, I guess. Um, if you go to the website, you're going to find out all the information that you need to know to get you started on the project. Uh, the project also features a dedicated smart contract marketplace. Uh, which you can uh, go on to and buy uh, items from the Genesis collection. Um, we're going to be talking a lot about this Genesis collection, the 10,000 Genesis collection anyways. You can also go and see the white paper, read the white paper. Uh, we're going to cover a huge chunk of it uh, during this video as well. Uh, we're going to address the future of this project. We're going to talk about... Uh, the upcoming play-to-earn uh, gaming experience that this project is going to be all about, as well as the reward uh, distribution towards uh, Genesis holders. So basically, if you hold uh, this collection, so the, the, the original 10,000 collection, any item here, you will be eligible to receive rewards, which will come in the form of ADA. Uh, but enough about that. We're, gonna, we're just going to jump in, all right? So, no further ado, this is the uh, intro, or at least the first screen of the Pixel Forge. Uh, this is what it looks like if you're not logged in. Um, let me just quickly disconnect my wallet. So, um, we uh, have the option to connect the app to uh, several uh, DAP uh, connectors. Um, these are, I think, all of the four which are available right now on Cardano. Uh, but out of convenience, obviously, we're going to go with NAMI. Um, so uh, this assumes that we're pretty much starting off. We're fresh users of the Pixel Wars, and we just went to the website. By the way, this is actual in-browser footage. So what you see here is actually happening inside a browser window. Um, all right, so we connected our wallet, right? We connected our NAMI. Now, in order to be able to access the Forge, uh, we are going to need to create a new account. And by creating a new account, we essentially uh, mint a new NFT, which will be our account token. Uh, this NFT will sit in our wallet. Uh, we will have complete ownership uh, over this NFT. By the way, we can do whatever we want with it. And it will uh, be uh, like the central or uh, the, one of the most essential parts of this um, journey because it contains all of the relevant information related to this account. So bear in mind that all of the information that you see on screen, everything that is dynamic, like usernames, what pixels you have, so on and so forth, this information is not stored in a database, like in a cent centralized database. This information is stored in your account token on chain and is completely transparent uh, and secure, uh, obviously assured by the Cardano blockchain's uh, security. So let's go ahead and just create a new user account. We're just gonna call it AFX uh, newbie because this is our newbie account. Uh, and once we click create account, we're gonna see that uh, 
Nami window pops up asking us to uh, sign a transaction, which essentially mints our new account token into our wallet and deducts the uh, fees uh, required for this transaction to occur on the blockchain. By the way, we're on testnet, so this is not like real ADA or something. Um, what's interesting here is um, besides everything I said earlier, we're also uh, experimenting with a new way of minting that uh, to my knowledge hasn't necessarily been done in like a mainstream way on the Cardano blockchain, usually drops or minting, the minting experience is like send uh, ADA to an address and then wait for your asset to uh, reach your account. But um, this new way of minting uh, is to that uh, what, uh, I don't know, electric cars are to diesel. So this basically allows us to um, mint and pay for the asset itself in one single transaction. As you can see here, I'm paying the transaction fees because the, there's no cost uh, incurred, no extra cost incurred for uh, creating an account on, on, on the Pixel Wars, a Pixel Wars account. Uh, and I'm also receiving my asset, which, uh, yeah, this is gibberish, but we're going get to get into, get into that in quite a gif. But I, I'm basically receiving my asset in the same transaction, and you're going to see what I'm talking about here. So let's just confirm and wait for blockchain confirmation. By the way, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and skip blockchain confirmations in the video. Uh, so just not to make it, you know, long, sometimes it takes maybe a minute or so to happen. Um, but we're just going to leave this one on, uh, just to uh, showcase. Um, and, and basically what's going to happen is that this new account mint is this new account token will be minted to my account. And obviously you see here, this is my new account, AF newbie. Uh, and if we're going to look in my wallet, you're going to see that this, um, token appears in my wallet right now. And this is the token which I need to have in my wallet in order to uh, log into the Pixel Forge. For example, if I were to refresh this web page, you're going to see that um, it's just going to detect the fact that I have a token, uh, a, a Pixel Wars account token in my wallet, and uh, it's just going to go ahead and load it. Uh, if, if, if we were to look at the transaction itself, and we're going to get a little bit technical, you might as well skip, skip this part, but I just want to be thorough. Um, if we're going to look at the transaction itself, you're going to see that my address, which is this one, uh, in NAMI, it's, it's basically the same address, um, went on and uh, minted uh, a native asset on Cardano, which is this, which is the account token that I was talking about earlier. And if we're going to look at the metadata, we're going to see that the information stored in the account token is the information that we're going to see on screen in the app. So this is my username. Uh, these are my pixels. I have none. We're going to get into forging uh, real soon. Uh, XP level and season. Uh, anyways, just so you have a clue, like where all the information that you see on the screen comes from, it comes from this account token. So if you were to send out the account token to, I don't know, another address, then you wouldn't be able to log into your Pixel Wars account because then that account will belong to another address. Um, all right, so uh, getting back to this, uh, once we have created our new account, we're just going to go ahead and go to the... Uh, by the way, you can just disconnect at any time and then reconnect with another wallet or whatever. Uh, all right, so let's go to the forge. All right, so uh, this is what the forge uh, will look like. Uh, there's a lot of information displayed here on screen. Um, and, and we're going to take it one by one, all right? So this, this, this top left part uh, is not relevant right now because we're not going to get into the gaming aspect in this video. We're just going to cover the forging aspect. But essentially what this will showcase is the amount of experience that I have reached uh, throughout a certain level uh, of uh, gameplay. The levels are going to get progressively harder and harder, uh, so on and so forth. Um, now, uh, this uh, main information, the main information displayed right here is what item we have selected in, these, in this little carousel that we have in, in the bottom. And if we, if we just go ahead and click on, on everything, we're going to see that uh, this information changes according to each, of, uh, each item that we have selected. 
Now, uh, you're probably wondering what this is. So this is what we call the season, uh, the forge season. So right now it's season zero because it's going to be the first one. Uh, these attributes are going to be unlocked during gameplay. Uh, so the more you progress throughout the game, the more experience you gain, the more uh, attributes you actually unlock. And this is like the order in which they unlock. Uh, and coincidentally, uh, if, if you look carefully, you're going to see that the order in which these attributes unlock is the actual uh, rarity uh, of these attributes. And if we're going to go to the uh, rarity sheet, you're going to see what I'm talking about. Uh, so these are the actual Genesis attributes sorted from uh, the least rare to the most rare. And if we look here, you're going to see that uh, the chain, turtleneck, golden earrings, cigarette, and so forth are like the least rare. And if we're going to go here, we're going to see that the chain, the turtleneck, golden earrings, cigarette, so on and so forth. Um, and this is, as I said earlier, this is the way that you actually unlock them by progressing through the game and gaining uh, new, uh, potentially uh, new uh, available uh, forging attributes. Uh, we're not going to cover gameplay, as I said, just so you have like a clue of what's going to happen. Um, all right. Uh, obviously, for using the Forge token, the Forge token is something that we gave out during Season 2, I think, as a uh, bonus to people who participated. And the Forge token is going to allow you to forge random uh, Forge pixels, a random uh, guy uh, that we're going to do in one sec. Um, now, for convenience, I went along and unlocked everything here, so we're not going to have to deal with the restrictions that are imposed by these little locks. Uh, we're essentially going to be able to forge all of these attributes. Uh, never mind the undefined stuff, uh, it's just not, the information is not present here. Um, because the game is still, uh, the Forge and the game are still in development, and by the way, this, is a, this product is still in development, so anything any bug that you might see um, is quite normal. Uh, the uh, stats modifiers as well are not final. Uh, mostly the information that is final and that I'm like 90% sure of is the pricing. So if we're going to look at the debt base, uh, forging a debt base will cost us 20 ADA, forging a chain will cost us 10 ADA, and then forging any other attribute is going to be relative to forging the chain. So uh, based on the based on the uh, percentage of rarity between the two uh, attributes. So for example, if there's 2,557 chains uh, total, um, and then there's uh, 1,926 turtlenecks, then the price calculation of the turtleneck will be uh, the number of chains uh, divided by the number of turtlenecks uh, times the price of the chain, which is 10 ADA. And that gets us to 13.28 ADA for the turtleneck, so on and so forth, up until the most expensive and exclusive uh, attribute of the collection, which is the tight hoodie, um, which is uh, a lot. <laughs> uh, anyways, the uh, only exception uh, to this rule are the bases which uh, we need to forge first in order to forge to forge our attributes on top of so um, in order for us to have a forged pixel we, we need to start with the base but the bases are not priced according to uh, the same rule that I uh, told you about before uh, the bases will be priced as uh, 20 ADA for the dead base uh, I think 30 yes 30 ADA for the reptilian base um, 40 for the vampire, the wolf is, I think, yes, 70 ADA, and then the alien is 90 ADA. Um, now, you, you might have noticed that uh, there's uh, like a difference between bases and attributes in terms of uh, how the pricing goes, but there's also a uh, difference uh, between bases and attributes in terms of their in-game functionality and forging uh, aspect. And what I'm talking about is uh, the fact that bases themselves uh, start off with uh, some stats, right? So 
the dead base is going to be balanced and versatile versus the uh, alien, for example, which is a support-based class and is more like a specialty class, or the wolf, which is uh, a uh, DPS or damage per second class. Uh, and, and you're going to see that the stats actually change uh, according to the base that I've selected. So, for example, uh, for, the, for the wolf, which is like a major damage dealer, he's going to have lower dexterity, lower intelligence, but a hell of a lot of strength and health, as opposed to, say, uh, the vampire, which is a caster class, which is going to have a lot of intelligence, but that not that much uh, strength. Uh, as, as opposed to the uh, wolf itself. Now, each of these bases also features forging slots. And in order to sort of balance things out, uh, the dead base has six forging slots available. So you can forge up to six compatible attributes. And when I say compatible attributes, I mean you're not going to be able to forge a, a cigarette and, I don't know, a pipe uh, in the very same on the very same base because they're... Uh, gonna over overlap and they're not going to be you know but besides the aesthetical the aesthetic aspect uh, it's 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 not gonna work out in terms of gameplay either so um, um, we ha we need to have some sort of compatibility between attributes so um, the dead base allows forging up to six attributes because it's more of the uh, you know it's 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 more uh, as described here balanced and versatile which means that all of the uh, all of the stats are um, equal and a bit lower as opposed to the specialty stats for the wolf, the reptile, and so on. Um, the reptile, for example, is a um, dexterity-oriented class. It has, uh, as you can see here, uh, a lot of uh, baked-in uh, dexterity, um, but also suffers in strength. Uh, and the strength and intelligence aspect. Uh, and in order to sort of counterbalance this, uh, besides the bases unlocking uh, as you progress through the game, so when you're going to start out, you're going to have to start out with the dead base uh, and then play along and you unlock uh, bases and then you're going to be able to forge them. Uh, but the forging slots themselves, on the, more, uh, uh, the higher the base is in the uh, season, uh, the less forging slots you have. So, for example, Reptile has five forging slots available, so you can add up to five attributes on it versus the dead base, and so on and so forth. Uh, the uh, Vampire will have uh, four forging slots, the Werewolf will have three forging slots, and the Alien uh, finally will have two forging slots available since it's uh, more powerful and we need to sort of balance this out as well. Um, and... As I said earlier, the for these forging slots allow you to add attributes to the bases, and then each attribute adds a specific modifier to your stats. So, for example, the chain um, gives us plus two health, plus two strength, minus one dexterity, and minus two intelligence. So forging an attribute on top of a base will give you a certain edge in some respect, and then we'll provide a bit of a uh, disadvantage in some other uh, aspect. So that all depends on you and how you want to build your class, how you want to focus on, so uh, how you want to focus it on. So for example, if you want a strength class, uh, you're going to want to focus on health and strength. If you, want to, if you want to improve other aspects of your class, then you're going to want to focus on the other attributes. Uh, and, and finally, uh, the other thing that I wanted to, to mention here and, uh, is the, uh, are the native abilities. These native abilities are only present on bases, so hence the word native. So each of the bases, the uh, five bases available, are uh, a feature um, to uh, special native abilities which are proprietary to them. So for example, the dead base features a Kapow uh, ability, which will deal 5 to 10 damage points to the targeted pixel, and also play dead, which has 15% chance to survive a killing blow. These, activity, these abilities will be uh, split out into active and passive uh, abilities. Active meaning that you can um, actively trigger it in-game, and the little... Um, um, timer over here, um, hourglass uh, symbol over here, 
uh, illustrates how much uh, the cooldown is for each of these active abilities, meaning that I can use Kapow once per turn, for example. And then if we look at the Acidic Spew, which is an active ability of the Reptile, uh, it has a two, uh, a cooldown of two, which means that I can use it once every two turns if I uh, so choose to. Um, and yeah, I haven't mentioned, but uh, you know, I guess most of you already know this, the game is going to be turn-based. So you're gonna have to, you're going you're going to uh, have to build your uh, pixel team and then select up to three pixels out of that roster, uh, which will go into a gameplay uh, scenario versus another user who has uh, also um, selected three of his forged pixels, and then you're gonna play against each other uh, and and whoever wins gets the reward of uh, that specific uh, match. Um, so yeah, it's up to you how you want to spend these uh, in game. Uh, this all will all be covered, by the way. There's there's a lot of tweaking and balancing to be done when it comes to abilities and attributes and so on in gaming. So I'm not I'm not gonna even bother covering the, this like uh, in a, in an extended way. Um, they will be covered in an upcoming uh, demo uh, where we're gonna view gameplay uh, and we're gonna we're gonna actually get to to uh, experience these experiment with these uh, abilities. And by the way, apologies, I'm, I'm super tired. It's been, a, uh, it's been a very busy week for me, uh, if, if, I, if I trail off or anything like that. Um, all right, so back to where we were. Uh, each base features an active, and uh, either an active or passive abilities, uh, native abilities, which uh, give them some edge in battle. And also in attributes, whenever you forge them, uh, in addition to the attribute modifiers, you also get abilities with them baked in. So each attribute is going to feature its own specific ability, either a passive or an active one. So for example, the chain has a uh, bling uh, uh, ability, which, is, uh, which gives you a 5% chance to blind the attacking enemy pixel for one turn. Uh, the turtleneck will have a knitwear passive ability, so on, so forth. So for example, the cigarette has a blow smoke, blows a cloud of smoke at an enemy pixel, decreasing their attack damage by 50% for one turn. This has a cooldown of two turns. Um, all right, so this covers the attributes themselves, the stats and uh, the abilities and also the bases. Uh, and in a nutshell, this is the season. This is how it's gonna look like, more or less. This is the final, like 90% final UI anyways. Um, we're gonna add extra stuff into the season. Uh, so it's not gonna be like, the, the structure is not gonna be final, but the order will be final. Uh, we might add, I don't know, maybe skins that can be unlocked uh, or, other, or other cool stuff. Um, what else is there? Oh, uh, you might have noticed the buy forge pass. So the forge pass will be a special, um, uh, I don't know, uh, will grant you special access to certain attributes and or uh, other special uh, items within the season, which you would normally uh, not have access to uh, if you don't own the forge pass. So this will basically let you uh, forge uh, specific stuff which is locked behind this 200 ADA paywall. Um, and it's also going to be present in the season. So think about it like, I don't know, maybe a Call of Duty sort of vibe uh, where you get to uh, buy the season pass and have access to all sorts of uh, goodies like skins or special weapons and so on. Um, yeah, all right. So uh, let's get to the actual forging because I uh, think we've done enough talking for now. So, um, as I said earlier, in order to be able to forge, uh, to, to add attributes uh, to your uh, pixel, you need to forge a pixel base. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and forge a 20 ADA dead base. And when we click forge, we actually um, uh, get to decide what the name of the pixel that we're just forging is going to be. Uh, but all, I, if we're not feeling in inspired, then we can go ahead and let the fate decide for us. And I find this to be quite funny because uh, <laughs> the algorithm comes up with 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 a lot of uh, with a lot of hilarious names. So uh, for for the purpose of this demo, I'm just gonna <laughs> I'm just gonna let it choose for me. All right, so let's click Forge. 
what's going to happen now is that uh, the application is going to compile a transaction for us, uh, the same type of transaction that we've seen earlier, um, which we call the multi-signature or atomic mint, um, where we don't need to have like a more transaction, more than one transaction in order to mint and pay for something. So as you can see here, uh, what happens is I'm paying the 20 ADA that I have to pay for um, forging the dead base. Uh, I am giving up one asset, which is my account token. And I am receiving three assets, which is the new account token with the new information, uh, which says uh, this account token now owns a, dead, a dead base. Uh, and these two other uh, tokens, which are the counter tokens. Now, these are going to have a special role in the future uh, governance of this project as well. And this is going to be covered in a future iteration of the white paper too. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, the DING token, the Pixels governance token. This will not be connected to the game itself. So all the rewards in the game are not going to have to do with the DING. Um, but the DING token will incentivize people to play the game. Uh, now, uh, these these receipt tokens are actually meant to uh, keep account on my um, uh, on the forging on the global uh, forging uh, activity. So every time I forge a dead base, I'm going to mint a dead um, receipt and the zero x dead receipt. This means that uh, and, and the purpose of this uh, has to do with reward uh, distribution. Uh, and we haven't talked about reward distribution, but basically what happens is each time I forge a dead base now and I pay 20 ADA for it, I receive it into my account, but the 20 ADA actually gets split up into 15 ADA and 5 ADA. The 5 ADA is rewarded to the zero attribute dead base genesis holder and the 15 ADA is rewarded to whichever uh, dead uh, base uh, is uh, up to gaining royalties. And the royalties are basically distributed in rotation, meaning that from, from the least rare to, from the rarest to the least rare pixel. Uh, we're gonna cover all of that uh, in a GIF now uh, when we're gonna look at royalties, but right now I just wanna focus on, on, on the forge uh, itself. All right, so let's go ahead and sign our transaction, paying 20 ADA for a dead base, waiting for the blockchain confirmation. Uh, it's not going to take uh, longer than mainnet anyways. All right, so the transaction has been confirmed. Uh, and we actually uh, see that our inventory uh, button just became active, which is cool. We're going to go to that in just a second. Let, let's check our account. Uh, we're going to see that the transaction has gone through uh, just now. And the fact that we actually got the tokens that we paid for, uh, i.e., uh, the uh, account token, the new account token, freshly minted account token, which is basically the old one, but it contains the new information of what I just forged, uh, and the uh, counter tokens. Now, if we're going to go to the uh, transaction itself, we're going to see that um, we burned one token, minted three, and the transaction also has metadata. And also a message, by the way, forge that base. Uh, and the metadata itself, you're going to see that it just a pixel just popped up here in my pixels uh, array, meaning that I got a pixels base forged into my uh, inventory. Now, this base is completely empty. And as I said earlier, each base has six slots. And I have six available slots to forge on. And these are the attributes that I got. By the way, 
the um, attributes themselves, uh, you see here the health is between 30 and 40, strength between 25 and 35, these and so on. And these values actually get uh, determined randomly um, upon minting. So there's no way for uh, of you could actually tell which stats you're going to get. It's just based on your luck. So it's a random determination. And... Uh, Faith Viper, it seems that <laughs> that that, that, that uh, is my pixel's name, um, and and the, the stats that I got like strength is like thirty three from the twenty five to thirty five available. I think it's good. Uh, HP thirty five up to forty. Yeah, okay. So uh, you get the you get the idea. Um, all right, and now if we're gonna go into the inventory, we're gonna see. Uh, our, uh, our freshly minted uh, dead base. And in the inventory, you're going to see you're gonna, you have like 20 available slots to forge. So there's, you can forge up to 20 pixels in your account. Uh, but don't worry about it. If you ever want to remove one, uh, you can just go ahead and remove a base and empty a slot and then forge another one on top. Uh, so this is my pixel. You can actually, uh, you can actually just you know, uh, play around with it spin it around and so on but it, you know it doesn't do much because it doesn't have any uh attributes forged on top of it so let's just go ahead and forge a couple now and i'm just going to ask you to keep in mind the fact that each time we're forging something the amount that we're paying doesn't go uh it goes to a special reward address which is meant to reward genesis genesis holders so it doesn't go to the developer's pockets and so on and so forth. No, these are the rewards for the Genesis holders. And there's also going to be uh, rewards for uh, the Pixel Wars games, which um, we're just gonna cover, we're, ju we're gonna cover just now. So let's go ahead and mint a chain. So uh, as I said earlier, in order to be able to forge um, a, uh, a chain, uh, and attributes, sorry, we need to select, we need to have at least one available base, right? So let's go ahead and forge a chain. Uh, the only available base for us is the um, base that we just forged because we only have one. We then click forge. And what you're going to see is something similar to the bases. Um, and what happens here is that I'm basically uh, paying 10 ADA plus transaction fees. I'm putting in my account token, which is required to transact on the forge. Uh, any transaction on the forge, by the way, requires an account token. And I'm getting a chain counter token back, which basically tells the system that a chain has been forged. We know on the blockchain that a chain has been forged. Hence, whoever holds a chain in the Genesis collection and is uh, eligible for rewards, the rewards are based on rotation, by the way, we're going to cover that in, uh, in just a second. Um, Whoever holds a chain on the, in the Genesis collection, which is the 10,000 collection uh, that I spoke about earlier, is going to be able to claim this exact reward. Um, and, and the reward itself, the 10 ADA, is actually split up into 90% of it goes to the uh, Genesis reward pool. So if I hold a chain as a Genesis holder, I'll be eligible to uh, claim the 9 ADA. And the other one ADA goes to the Pixel Wars pool as a reward for winning a Pixel Wars game. So you see how, how this works is basically it, the, mo the more activity the Forge has, the more uh, rewards are spit into the um, reward, uh, Genesis reward pool and the, the Wars re reward pool. So it sort of finances itself, right? People are going to want to Forge in order to become more powerful and get more powerful equipment. They're going to want to play the game to gain experience and improve their uh, stats overall, forge new bases, and so on and so forth. And thus, they just keep uh, forging and forging and winning games, and then the rewards for winning games are these, and then the rewards for the Genesis holders are these. Um, let's go ahead and sign it. All of the information that you see here is kept on chain, by the way. This is kept in the user token, which is... Uh, very, very important and quite an interesting, um, quite an interesting uh, aspect because you don't actually have to handle uh, accounts anymore, which like for any game developer, this is like a wet dream, by the way, uh, because 
traditionally you would have to hold all of this information inside a database which requires servers which requires scaling and uh, security measures and so on and 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 the blockchain makes it like so much simpler to manage accounts everything is stored in an nft which is in your wallet you own the information uh, you own your uh, account information you own your account your account is not anymore uh, owned by the game provider in that specific database it's in your wallet uh, anyways it just trailed off i'm just fascinated about uh, about it all and and i think that a lot of people uh, who are making games on the blockchain don't actually get the fact that you know building a game on the blockchain is not just using uh, the assets as NFTs and uh, a cryptocurrency, whichever cryptocurrency you're building on, but it's actually about integrating the way that the blockchain works and 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 certain uh, you know aspects or principles of the blockchain within the actual gameplay, which is what we're doing right here. Um, so yeah, uh, it looks like the transaction went through. Uh, my pixel has now been forged with a chain. Um, it will appear on my forging slot. And if we go back, um, we're going to see, actually, if we go to the transaction itself, I'm just going to show you how it looks like on the uh, Cardano scan uh, website. Real quick. Oh, it's not found, obviously, because it hasn't been confirmed here yet. Anyways, it's, it's, it's going to look... Uh, basically going to look just like the basing like just like the forging of a base um, as you saw earlier where rewards go to part of the rewards go to uh, the reward pool and uh, the genesis reward pool and part of the rewards go to the wars reward pool um, all right uh, let's let's go ahead and forge another one actually you know what let's go ahead and forge a uh, another attribute on this right let's let's go ahead and forge a cigarette which is going to cost us 16.9 ADA. It's going to look like this. It's going to add all of the cigarettes' abilities to our and, and, and stats modifiers to our pixel. Uh, as you can see here, smoking is quite bad for you, so you're going to get a minus 2 in HP and a minus 1 in strength. We're not going to talk about the benefits. <laughs> uh, all right, let's, let's go ahead and sign it. Same deal as we saw before. Uh, we're getting two assets. One is the updated account token. The, uh, the other is the cigarette counter, which keeps track of globally for all globally for cigarettes, which in turn allows us to uh, correctly distribute rewards to Genesis holders. Seems like the transaction, the other transaction went through. And if we look in the metadata, we're going to see that we have a new attribute here. And this is on-chain information. Lovely. All right. Um, Blockchain confirmation is never uh, friendly uh, with us, but uh, it's the price of uh, doing business. And I think it's, uh, it's a very small price for getting to actually own your data. By the way, there's no, uh, no emails will be required for playing the game, no GDPR or, or anything uh, of that kind uh, are going to be required. You're going to be able to remain completely anonymous um, and everything is based on your account token. Um, all right, so we got our transaction confirmed. Uh, we got our cigarette forged on top of the uh, chain, which kind of looks cool if you ask me. Smoking is bad, though. Don't smoke. Um, all right, so um, let's go ahead and forge another one just for, uh, you know, uh, the sake of it. And let's go ahead and forge a wolf. All right, so we're just going to go ahead. By the way, the pricing is not baked in, so I'm just going to have to pay 28 as well. Uh, it's going to be 70 never mind this. Um, Wolf's on discount right now. <clears throat> and you'll see that once I, I forge the wolf base, because I'm using cheats uh, and, and, and don't have to actually progress through the entire uh, season in order to reach the wolf base, I'm gonna get a randomly uh, generated wolf, uh, a, a wolf base with randomly generated stats uh, in my account uh, once the transaction is confirmed. And uh, we're gonna get to forge one more attribute on top of it. And then we're gonna move on to uh, another account which already has a bunch of pixels forged into it. 
just so I show you guys how it looks like with, with, with a lot of pixels because we're not gonna wait on forging uh, 20 pixels uh, in this video. And once we're done with that, we're gonna go ahead and uh, do a demo of the uh, reward uh, of, of uh, the reward uh, claim for Genesis uh, pixels. So uh, I'll be having a Genesis pixel, a, a, a bunch of Genesis pixels, testnet Genesis pixels, and I will be, be claiming my rewards based on the current activity of forging that you see right here, plus the extra one that I did before the video in order to test stuff out. I just you know want to showcase it to you guys like a full end-to-end -end flow. If ever this transaction will be confirmed uh, in this lifetime, uh, even the testnet is uh, congested at times. Um, Any time now. Two hours later. The wolf is a pretty big uh, deal, so it gets it needs a lot of confirmations in order to make it to our uh, to our account token. Here we go. All right, so we're gonna see the wolf that we just forged appear in our inventory. Light serpent is <laughs> randomly. <laughs> <laughs> assigned name um, kind of like this wolf all right uh, enough of that let's move to uh, you basically got the gist of it anyways if there's questions I'm happy to answer on discord uh, the discord will be left inside in the description of this video alongside all of the other useful links um, that you need in order to get yourself started up on with the project um, and so on so um, all right We've seen how forging works. We've seen how we pay for forging. We've seen where, uh, what happens with the money, with the ADA that we actually pay with uh, for the forging. We've seen our inventory, which is uh, only has two pixels, unfortunately, right now. Uh, so let's move on to another account, um, which has more forged pixels, at least more than two. And I'm gonna go ahead and switch to uh, my main Forge account. By the way, this is on testnet, so uh, no real ADA was harmed during this process. So once we switched to this account, uh, we're gonna reload the page, and we're gonna see that uh, my account token, you know, it's, it's already in my wallet. I already created this account. I've already done a lot of forging with it. Um, and once you load up and you, you, you already have forged pixels in your account, uh, you're going to get like a random, uh, random pixel displayed here out of your forged pixels. So each time you refresh, you're actually getting a new, a, a random of forged pixels that you actually own. Uh, but anyways, let's go to the forge and uh, let's see uh, a more uh, compre comprehensive inventory here. So... These are, I think, there's like 11 forged pixels in here. Uh, I think the inventory like, looks quite better with it, like, or like at least half full, you know. Uh, spot follower. Spot follower features a chain, a monocle, a pipe, and laid back hair attributes, which have been forged together uh, to bring us this lovely, lovely forged pixel here. Very cool, the spot follower. What else do we have here? We have a nice mohawk, cigarette, uh, mantle on Storm Jam. We have a gladiator on Almond Sparrow. <laughs> These are completely random names. Uh, I'm sure that people are just going to keep forging to, to see what random names they get on their pixels. Uh, and we have a couple, a few, a few MVPs here, right? We have Cyan Hoodie, which is, this is his avatar, avatar and I forged him. Uh, hi, Cyan. Uh, I'm gonna leave the good news for the end of this video, by the way. Oh, look, here's E4L um, and Smugly <laughs> and Durashi and Leander. Anyways, uh, this this is just to show you guys how how things look right now and in, in, in an inventory which features more than uh, two pixels and uh, like these attributes have already been forged. Uh, and we're, we, we, we didn't want to actually have, you know, spend time forging during this video, your snack bar. All right. Um, 
Okay, so, oh, okay, let's, let's just, uh, oh, shrink as well. Um, let's just uh, showcase how the removal of a pixel goes as well, because I think we skipped this. Here's Pro, who, who will we remove? I don't know. I don't know who to remove. Let's just remove one of these guys. Now let's just remove the Almond Sparrow Wolf. All right, so basically what happens now is I have to submit my account token uh, in a transaction and get back a new account token with the information, uh, with the updated information. This will b basically allow me to free up a slot and it will, um, if for example, it, if it so happens, for example, that I have all of these slots full and I want to free up a specific slot, I can then remove one from my account and then, I don't know, maybe I want to respec a pixel or, uh, I don't know, I've seen that a new meta works out or uh, I just don't like one of my pixels anymore. I just, you know, just want to free up one slot. Uh, I will just go ahead and remove it. This will, uh, will completely remove it, by the way, so everything, all the money that you put into it will be uh, in, uh, in consequence uh, lost to you. Uh, and as you can see, uh, the Gladiator Wolf just disappeared from my account. Rip. All right. Um, now that we've done, uh, we've seen how the forge works, We've done a lot of, uh, you know, research on the explorers. We've seen where the rewards go. We've seen an uh, actual full inventory, not a full, but at least a half full inventory and what it looks like. We've seen how the season looks like. We've understood how it works. Um, I think it's time to actually go ahead and, you know, redeem our reward tokens, so to speak. So um, let's go back. Uh, redeem our rewards, actually, not reward tokens. Sorry about that. Been a long night. Let's go back and let's switch to our account, which has uh, Genesis pixels inside it. So um, I went ahead and made an account before filming this video and actually minted three Genesis pixels inside it and um, what happens here is that we can actually redeem our rewards for these Genesis pixels I'm not gonna take the rotation into account I'm just gonna assume that it's our turn to redeem the rewards by the way the rotation that I was speaking about earlier is because there's like 10,000 Genesis pixels we need a way to um, distribute rewards fairly and the way that this will happen is that you will be eligible to claim rewards on your Genesis pixel based on its rarity. So for example, uh, the most the most uh, rare would be, I guess, the eight attributes. So the eight attribute pixel will always be the pixel who will be able to um, redeem their rewards based on the attributes that it has. So for example, the first pixel cap that actually gets forged the rewards will be redeemable by this pixel. And then we go down in line in terms of uh, rarity. Then there's the one attributes. Then, then, there's, then there's the two attributes, or sorry, the six attributes, the two, three, four, five, whatever. So this is how it's going to go. Basically, a uh, reward rotation is going to happen based on the rarity of the uh, pixel in terms of number of attributes. Because we need to give the number of attributes some love as well, I guess. Um, all right, and, and then the uh, owners of the zero attribute bases are going to be able to redeem uh, their own rewards, which is the zero X reward token that you saw earlier, which basically um, allows you to, uh, to redeem uh, each time that a specific base gets forged. So for example, each time that a vampire base gets forged, gets forged uh, five ADA out of the, or six or whatever ADA out of the um, vampire base price goes into the zero ad tree pool. And then the other will be redeemable by the vampire holder, which uh, is in rotation at that moment. So the zero ad tree is actually a quite powerful base because it gets an uh, explicit amount of ADA each time uh, somebody forges that specific base, which is pretty cool. 
all right, so um, let's get back to this. We were about to actually claim our Genesis reward. So I went ahead and created a, uh, a new account, uh, I Love Pixels, which is my uh, Genesis reward uh, account. It has a, a, a few fake pixels. These are test pixels, testnet pixels. Uh, some of the attributes on these guys are like the chain, the, uh, the turtleneck, uh, the um, top knot, golden earrings, club masters, so on. Some of these attributes have already been forged. Hence, uh, rewards are available for holders of these attributes from the Genesis collection. And you're just gonna see a sample transaction and let's go ahead and claim our rewards. Now, if we look at the details of this transaction, we're gonna see that uh, we are about to receive almost 300 ADA, uh, pay a 0.27 ADA fee. And if we look at the details, we're gonna see that there's a recipient with the 71 ADA. This is the actual reward address which gets ADA returned to it because you know, probably there was an UTXO which didn't, um, which held more ADA than uh, we actually needed. So we need to return that to the reward address for other people to claim as rewards. And then there's also the plus nine assets. And basically this, these are uh, fungible tokens which are meant to also keep track of how many uh, uh, how much uh, uh, of, of the progress of the reward, uh, of, of the redeemed rewards. So we know for a fact which, uh, how many number, uh, what, what is the current number of uh, pixels that have been redeemed. And if the number is, uh, and based on this number, we calculate the eligibility of somebody to redeem the rewards. Uh, and we're gonna see that, uh, we saw earlier that we have three uh, dead uh, type pixels in our wallet, and then there's the three uh, corresponding debt bases which we're claiming the rewards for, and then there's the chain, mantle, tongue, uh, cigarette, turtleneck, club masters, golden earrings, and uh, top knot, which are also attributes from my three pixel collection that you saw earlier. Uh, these, all of these attributes have been forged in the Pixel Forge earlier, uh, or just by myself uh, before filming this video, so we are eligible for these rewards. Uh, Please take into account that this doesn't, you know, necessarily calculate rotation right now. It's just, you know, a means to an end in order for you guys to see an actual end-to-end -end flow of reward uh, distribution. So let's just go ahead and sign the transaction, confirm it, and just wait for blockchain confirmation uh, for a couple of hours. I'm, I'm kidding. We're on testnet. It's, it's not going to take a couple of hours. Hmm. Let's just keep refreshing and see if it's... If it came to us, this this is from eight hours ago from my test, so I guess we need to wait a bit more in order for our latest transaction to get confirmed on the blockchain. Right. Oh, okay. So we see that just now. We received 298 ADA. This is the transaction. Uh, it's a multi, uh, of course not. It's a multi-signature transaction. It required um, um, more uh, than one signature to actually go through. And it's also a uh, minting and uh, receiving of funds in a single transaction, what I, call to, what I like to call atomic minting. Um, and the ADA that we just redeemed can be seen in our account. Uh, our pixels have been uh, productive for us, uh, at least uh, here on Testnet. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm just gonna wait and see if the trans this, this transaction is gonna get confirmed on Cardano's kind as well, so you guys can actually see the structure. But until then, I just wanna add that uh, there's a surprise at the end of this video for you guys, and I'm just gonna go ahead and leave the link up in the description as well. Um, and also post it in the Discord announcement that I'm gonna be making about this video. Uh, mm -hmm. Cyan Hoodie, uh, our esteemed MVP member from the Dead Pixels Discord community, has uh, compiled a uh, reward uh, calculator, a Genesis reward calculator, which uh, is obviously speculative, uh, but it's uh, quite interesting uh, to see how much uh, profits your pixel bag will uh, get you in a year or in a season. 
and you can get a you know you can get to tweak all the, of the um, specific uh, aspects meaning you can tweak prices you can tweak uh, how much a season will last and so on and so forth as I said it's purely speculative we're gonna get to it I'm just gonna go do a quick overview of it in a, in, in a, in a quick sec but first let's let's look through our uh, redeeming transaction where we actually got uh, there's a lot of ADA here, but it's because of the ADA that has been sent to the uh, reward uh, address from forging. And you can see that our test pixels uh, <coughs> are also part of this transaction. And then in the outputs, um, we got our ADA and then we minted these counter tokens, which allow us to determine if a pixel has already redeemed or not. Uh, their um, uh, rewards, their Genesis rewards. I redeem Genesis rewards. This is a beautiful transaction. Um, okay, so that's uh, about it with the demo. Uh, I'm just going to quickly go through the calculator, which you're also going to be, uh, uh, which is also going to be uh, made available to you. You can see, you can actually put in your uh, entire pixel bag and determine how much. Ada, you'll be um, actually uh, earning based on certain variables like season, uh, season uh, duration, uh, players per season, uh, so on and so forth. And ov obviously the pricing of the, uh, the um, uh, floor pricing of these pixels, which is not dynamic, by the way, we're going to have to input this by ourselves. Uh, and this basically determines how much your uh, revenue uh, a specific attribute will grant you. Uh, based on obviously speculative, again, don't take it for granted. It's, it's just a fun little tool to play around. But I think uh, it's, it's, it provides a lot of insight to how much uh, and how profitable the, the Forge uh, will be if you hold Genesis Pixels. Uh, thank you again, Sign Hoodie, for uh, actually uh, coming up with this and taking the time to put this together. Um, thanks a lot to uh, the MVPs, to the community, to everybody who's been involved in, in this project. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll, I guess I'll see you on Discord, Twitter, uh, and uh, in the next uh, Pixel Wars demo, which will be, I don't know when, but... Uh, I guess this marks uh, the first leg of the roadmap, mostly completed. Um, I'm very happy with the uh, results so far. I hope you guys like it. Uh, and in the meantime, uh, be well, stay safe, and uh, have a great rest of your weekends. Cheers. This has been AF signing off.